Okay. Um, so uh, the previous talks were great uh, because they lead in nicely to uh, what I wanted to talk about. I'll take these off because they're glary. Um, so uh, I've been at Mozilla for a few years, and we've been working uh, on uh, WebVR first, WebXR now. We started working on adding AR to VR in the context of WebXR last summer. Um, and one of the things that, that came out of it is the, the, the app that Capricious uh, mentioned, Casper mentioned. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, where things are going with AR. Um, and a lot of this stuff uh, is things that are being discussed in the WebXR, the Immersive uh, Web Community Group. Uh, and experiments that we're doing and, and other discussions that are going on. And some of the stuff you'll, will probably resonate with you. For me, AR is really the future of Web, WebXR. Uh, WebVR is, is great, and WebXR is essentially started as WebVR2. Um, and so the really, the, the stuff that isn't yet settled is the AR part. And the questions that people had for the folks from Google kind of reflected that. When is this going to happen? When is that going to happen? Okay, so VR... The first version of WebXR will have sort of the support you need to do VR with current VR devices, but uh, will have pretty minimal support, uh, as, as the folks from Google described, for AR starting out. And if you think about where we want to go with AR, right, we want uh, to get to the point where we can mix 3D media with the world, as, as everybody here is, is showing, uh, registered real time, and that means we need to to sort of have more capabilities than just 3D motion, 6D motion tracking and hit testing, for example, because we need to know a lot more about the world, even going back to the stuff that, that say, Sutherland did back in the 60s. Um, if you think about all of the canonical apps that people imagine for augmented reality, whether it's military, industrial, uh, surgery apps, uh, car maintenance and things, you need to know a lot about the world more than just the device motion if you're gonna, gonna be able to, say, augment that, that factory. Um, if you move into sort of more consumer entertainment-oriented apps, you still need to know a lot, right? If we wanna create an interactive drama where people are walking around in a room or teach kids how to uh, 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 use condoms for safe sex, as, as we did in a game a bunch of years ago at Georgia Tech, teach them math, do multiplayer games, these sort of things, we need to know stuff and be able to sense things about the world and be able to support things like multiplayer social stuff. So maybe we want to create experiences that um, uh, mix virtual reality and augmented reality. In the upper left, actually, Toby's here who uh, created this, uh, and, and that's his picture there. Uh, maybe you want, we created a, an experience years ago where we mixed uh, uh, we created an augmented reality client for Second Life so that you could have virtual reality people interacting with augmented reality people uh, in mixed experiences. If we want to do that, we need to know a lot more about the world around us. Okay, so the thing to think about with AR and to keep in mind, and then that raises the questions that a lot of us have is, uh, if we're going to have AR experiences, they're constrained essentially by the knowledge the computer has about the physical world, right? And AR experiences, unlike VR experiences, are constrained in other ways by the world. Um, in VR, you could teleport users. You can control where they look. In VR, in AR, you can not really control where people look, ignoring, say, advanced robotics. And, and so we, we, we need to do more than just do motion tracking. Even a simple example like this, where we might want to have things illuminated by the sunlight uh, in the world, uh, to do that, we need to know where we are in the world, we need to know what time of day it is, and, we, and, and then we can potentially estimate where the sun is, which is what we did there. So even simple things like geolocation aren't really supported in the current WebXR standard. Okay, so WebXR, as the folks in the previous sessions have described, is uh, a platform that lets you do AR and VR on the open web, and it lets you take advantages of the, the, the power of the web, right? It's open, it's connected, you can bounce through things. You don't have to install stuff. There's no gatekeepers, so I can make an app to teach middle schoolers how to use condoms uh, uh, safely, because Apple can't say anything about it. Um, uh, which they would never allow you to ship an app like that, right? We did stuff like this with the CDC, and, and, and you can't ship apps that, that do these sorts of things. Um, 
But more importantly, I think, and some people touched on this, there's this webby approach to doing things that's really different than the app world. Right? We can get platform independence. So the Google folks talked about uh, doing progressive refinement from, from 2D down to AR. But what if we want to do uh, sort of the bigger collection of refinement from 2D to 3D on the desktop to AR to VR and build an app that actually works across all of those and give you as the user the choice of which type of device you want. Right? So that's something the web can offer. Um, we also have the potential to do more interesting things with privacy. If you run an app on a HoloLens, that app gets the entire map of the space you're in. Right? So if you run it in your kitchen, but you've used the HoloLens in your bedroom, it may get that model of your space. You may not care, but that may be something that, that in the web we can actually uh, uh, give much stronger privacy guarantees, much like current websites do versus apps. Um, OK, so as I said, WebXR started as WebVR. Uh, WebVR uh, has been around for a while, but it didn't get standardized. Uh, the community is shifting toward web, WebVR. A web XR, but you can run web VR stuff in most bra in, on most platforms right now, um, as Casper said. Okay, again, as he he alluded to, um, the power of the web is is the ability to integrate with AR VR with all of these other tools and platforms and workflows that you might do. Okay, so this is actually running in the browser um, that he said, and hopefully. This will, these demos will work. I, I can't be normal and just use videos. I always have to use demos. So um, uh, most of us are familiar with, with 3D for photo, panoramic photos on, on mobile, right? Um, but if AR kit will work in this terrible lighting, um, which it probably won't, um, in which case I will move on, um, we, you can see and actually move, thank you. Let's see if it works. Air kit really hates low light. Okay, so if this works, which it probably won't, I should learn better. Okay, whoa, okay. Okay, I will just flip on. Yeah, it's pausing because, oh, there it is. Okay, so we can actually move around uh, in space, right? So in some ways, this isn't VR like a head mount. This is VR. Um, that is equivalent to the way we do AR. So I've got something suspended here, and it's, I'm moving in and around, and that's great. So we can do this in the browser. So this is just running in an iOS browser. As you can see, the performance is decent. Um, I can move in and around, and so on. Um, to go back to the question someone asked about uh, uh, iOS and performance, this is running in the awful way that you would imagine on iOS, uh, inside uh, with a WK web view inside, where we're actually injecting a whole bunch of information painfully into the web view every frame, which is how the Google uh, Air, Web AR and Air kit works as well. Okay, um, one of the reasons this works is that the web uh, is actually a lot better than, if, than you would imagine if you're not uh, coming from the web. So this is a WebGL2 demo um, running on, on my Mac at home, and it, it has sort of beautiful lighting effects. The stuttery frame rate is because of the, it's an animated GIF, so it, it looks terrible. But uh, you can get these beautiful lighting and, and everything effects that you would imagine from things like Unity. So WebXR existed, and, uh, but then all these, these devices started coming along, right? Everything from HoloLenses and, and Metas and, and Daiquiri displays to things like the Magic Leap display that was, was announced. Um, so in the same app, we can do AR. So now I have that, the same thing, and, and you're all out there. And this thing is sitting here, and I can move around. And this is sort of a beautiful, uh, reflective uh, GLTF model uh, that, that shows things. But we're running in full, um, uh, running a full shader engine. So I can do you know, post-processing effects. I can tap if it actually finds the floor and add things. There we go. And so I can add little characters by tapping around on the floor and, and create these little graphic animated things. And it's, just running in real time in the browser. And, um, uh, and I, always, I, I d like to do demos when I do this and run this because it really emphasizes that this really does work, right? So I'm using a JavaScript presentation program and mixing it with, with WebGL and so forth. So up till now, the, we've talked about WebXR uh, in the context of these features. But this is the discussion of WebXR as an interface to these basic tracking capabilities to web VR and stuff is really what's referred to as the WebXR device API. So if you go and look at those, the, the Immersive Web Community Group, that's the plat standard that's being developed. And this is 
aimed at creating a cross-platform abstraction to let us access these devices. Uh, going back to the question someone asked about uh, AR core cloud anchors, um, things that go into this standard, the expectation is that they can be implemented everywhere, right? So the anchor work uh, is sort of contingent on us coming up with a way of implementing something similar across all platforms. Now that doesn't mean that these other things won't happen, it just means that they may not make it into, say, this spec. There might be other specs that aren't implemented everywhere or platform-specific things or platform-specific ways. If you go and look at WebGL, for example, there are dozens of, of extensions that may or may not be implemented on different platforms. So techniques like Approaches like that may be what happens to expose things. Okay, so as an example um, of exposing platform-specific capabilities, this, these are running in this version of the WebXR viewer, um, which Apple hasn't approved yet, but I uh, added two ARKit-specific features to our, our, our little uh, experimental web browser. One uh, on the left is using ARKit's uh, image recognition anchors. On the right is using the phones the iPhone X's face tracker, um, and uh, uh, aside from the beautiful acting, uh, the thing that's interesting about that, if you're watching that video, is it's fast, right? And if anybody wants to try it afterwards, you can try it on, on my, my iPhone, um, or you can go and download it and compile it yourself and install it on your own iPhone. Um, it, and uh, it's really a testament to the power of these computers, these devices, that this stuff works uh, in the context of, of the web browser. Because we're having to inject huge amounts of data every frame, and it just sort of will work at 60, uh, 30 to 60 hertz, okay? But looking forward, uh, there's a lot more that's going to be needed to make WebXR work, okay? So um, I'm going to talk. Uh, br ever very briefly, rapidly, about a bunch of these topics. So the device API is the core API that is being developed. Um, but there's a lot of other things that you need, as you can imagine, to make WebXR, or AR, VR on the web, work. We need something like persistence, which is what the cloud anchors give. Um, uh, and uh, there's a bunch of sessions here, people talking about uh, things like the AR cloud and so on. So there's a lot of people thinking about how do we do persistence. We need simple geospatial. Current WebXR standards don't align the coordinate frames from AirKit and AirCore with uh, uh, the world, um, which is a problem because if you don't know which direction your phone's facing, even if you use the location API, you can't do geospatial AR. So there's discussions about that, lots of discussions about improving uh, 3D graphics and integrating it better. So I'm not going to talk too much about those um, uh, since they've already been, been discussed. Computer vision is another big one. So a lot of the examples I showed up front, the reason I went through that was because I wanted to sort of remind and emphasize, remind people and emphasize to them, to y'all, that, um, sorry, I keep turning my phone, um, that uh, the base features of AirKit, AirCore, uh, Windows Mixed Reality, and so on, will not in any foreseeable future time frame do everything we need, right? So there was a talk by PTC this morning in the, in the Inspire track talking about the kind of sensing they do. There's a lot of work on custom computer vision sensing. In the context of WebXR, wouldn't it be great if we could just target the web with our vision library and then it would run everywhere instead of having to port to different platforms? So we can do that or we should be able to do that. So everyone I hope remembers these ugly black and white markers. So I uh, implement a really simple little API, and it's not going to become a standard directly, but it's do it using a standard set of OpenCV. This is a, a, a RUCO marker, which is part of the OpenCV uh, library. And what I'm doing is every frame, taking video in, sending it into a web worker, uh, and I'm running a version of OpenCV that's been compiled into WebAssembly and is the same C++ code but running inside the web page and it's tracking and detecting these markers. But then I'm using that marker to create an AR kit, a WebXR anchor, and that thing then, then does this. So there's a lot of interesting discussions and work being done about how best we can integrate uh, computer vision and the web. But the promise of this is really exciting, right? Because you could imagine creating 
a maintenance and repair app or something like that, and it just runs on every device and every, every platform. Okay. Speaking of browsers, so one question is, what in the world is a web browser in the age of AR and VR? Right? On these phones, the way that Google is implementing in Chrome, the way that we implement it in, in the WebXR viewer, and we'll probably do it at some point in, in Firefox and these platforms. Um, I mean, we already have web VR in Firefox. Uh, uh, but what does it mean if you're thinking, you know, you're working on stuff, you're thinking about, oh, I want to do something in the web. Are we going to put just 2D web pages up in 3D around us? Maybe, right? If you've used HoloLens or Windows Mixed Reality, you can see that. Um, we have uh, a... a uh, a web browser called Firefox Reality that we're building for uh, standalone headsets, which I can, I have an Oculus Go with it. I'm going to rapidly go because I realized, just noticed I'm pretty much out of time. A um, lot of work on multi user is going to need to be solved. Uh, the t one of our uh, team in our group has been building uh, something called Hubs that allows you to use pure web technologies to collaborate uh, with the idea of being able to implement fully collaborative VR experiences into uh, web experiences. Uh, also potentially use them for AR. Um, we've done some little tests of what the hubs might look like in uh, uh, an AR experience. Um, and finally, tooling. So I won't uh, go into this except to say that when we think about the kinds of devices and the kinds of different modalities, things are a heck of a lot more complicated than just uh, uh, the kind of progressive refinement, refinement you're used to on the web right now. One of my colleagues, Trevor, uh, has been tweeting and writing about this, um, and uh, I, can, I can point you at him if, if you want. Um, the challenge really is, again, building these progressive apps that run across all kinds of platforms, from 2D to AR to VR, um, and uh, this is a video from a sample that, that uh, runs in our app as well. Okay, so uh, we and others are going to be doing a bunch of experimentation uh, over the next year to think about these and other kinds of capabilities. Um, but the big sort of message of this is that the potential of the web as a platform for AR, VR, for XR, uh, depends on more than just the core APIs, but also this whole ecosystem. Um, but when all this stuff comes together, it's going to be possible to build these, pl uh, a these applications that run across kind of any device you want uh, that you have at the time, not just AR, just VR. Okay, so thank you.